In this video, I'll describe my approach to ultra-high dividend investing to generate cash. And we're starting right now. Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Keystone Financial Academy. My name is Elliot, and if you're new to this channel, I invite you to join the community by subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Also, if you want all the financial advice that's found in this channel summarized in one place, check out my newly released book, The Keystone Financial Guide, and it's found at the website shown below. Okay, let's get this going with today's video. So as you probably know, dividend investing is a fairly popular investing approach and one that I've talked about quite a bit on this channel. As a reminder, dividends are nothing more than cash payments that you as an investor receive for purchasing and holding certain company stocks. This payment is stated as a dividend yield, which is just a percentage of the stock price. If you own shares of that stock, you will receive payments quarterly or sometimes monthly for every share of the stock that you own. Now, if you want a more in-depth introduction to dividend investing itself, there's a link in the description below to a video I made that will tell you exactly that. Here I will assume you already have a basic understanding of dividends and we will just focus on the more advanced topic of high yield dividend investing. So while dividend investing overall is certainly a good strategy, the one major problem is that all the big name dividend paying stocks pay out a fairly low dividend. There may be several reasons for this. For one, the company's shares may still be rising in value and management does not feel like it needs to raise a dividend yield in order to attract investors. And this is is in fact the case with companies like Microsoft or Apple. In other cases, the shares may not be appreciating all that much at all, but the company is such a safe and solid organization that it attracts investors anyway, and they can just keep their dividends low. Such is the case with 3M, Coca-Cola, or Procter & Gamble, among many examples. How much are these yields? Well, for the older legacy companies that I just mentioned, the yields are about 3% or below. For the younger fast movers like Microsoft or Apple, they're actually way below 1%. Clearly, earning a 1, 2, or even 3% yield is not terribly attractive, and you certainly are paying a price for the perceived safety or potential stock appreciation. While this is not bad in and of itself in a solid, well-diversified portfolio, what if you just want to earn higher dividends. In such case, conventional wisdom says be careful. Stocks that pay higher dividends, sometimes much higher dividends, are looked at as being riskier investments because the company can cut their dividend, discontinue the dividend completely, or the company can even fail and go out of business. All of the above is certainly true to some extent. And the rule of thumb is the higher the dividend, the higher the risk, with the typical advice being stick to the safer companies that raise their dividends annually. However, this is not a blanket statement and the fact remains that there does exist a significant minority of high dividend paying companies that are in fact fairly safe bets, but it does take more work to identify them, mitigate the risk, and then follow them to periodically review your portfolio and adjust as needed. This is more difficult to do and perhaps this is why this is not the conventional wisdom given out to beginner investors, but it's very much doable and can lead to a portfolio that yields 7, 8, 9, or even 10% dividend yields. And this approach is exactly what I'm going to detail out for you in this video. So there are three things you need to be able to do in order to put together an ultra high yielding dividend portfolio. First, you need to identify companies that offer ultra high yields in the first place. Second, you need to evaluate them for suitability and weed out the ones that are clearly too high of a risk. And third, you need to create an exit strategy in case your investments go bad for whatever reason and you're forced to sell the shares. Let's go through these in a bit more detail and then I'll give you some examples from my own ultra high dividend portfolio. The first item which is identifying the high dividend yield paying companies is actually the easiest and it just involves some reading and online research. There are thousands of companies out there and unless you're a professional analyst you're certainly not going to know about even a small fraction of them. So you can research articles, 
do targeted Google searches of companies that offer 6 to 12% dividend yield and also read reviews and recommendations from professional analysts. At this point, keep in mind you're just gathering raw data and you're never going to rely on just recommendations in order to purchase stock. But this is a great way to uncover companies that you may not otherwise have heard about. Some industries that offer ultra high yields include energy distribution, such as oil and natural gas pipelines, vice stocks such as cigarette and tobacco product manufacturers, and quite a few REITs or real estate investment trusts. So once you put together a list of perhaps 50 potential candidates, it's time to narrow them down to just a small handful by carefully researching and vetting them. Now this process isn't really different from any type of fundamental analysis, except here you're not just checking out the company's performance and leadership, but also researching its history of paying dividends. Fundamental analysis of companies is a separate topic and I do have a video on it with a link in the description below. But to summarize, do take a look at a number of quantitative items such as the company's assets, liabilities, revenue, expenses, and net income or profit. You can also take a look at a few metrics such as the PE ratio or price to earnings to see if the company is overvalued or the debt to asset ratio to see if the company is over leveraged. You should also do a qualitative analysis to see if the company is in a sustainable and growing business and do a check of management and the company's brand value. Then move on to the dividend and see how long it has been paid out and if there are any cuts, discontinuations or raises in recent years. Believe it or not, there are a small handful of ultra high paying dividend aristocrats who have done a great job of raising their already high dividends for quite a few years. And what about those ridiculously high dividend rates, those floating around the 12 to 16 percent? Well, those do get quite risky and the ones we want to most likely weed out, they are from companies that are in very high risk boom bust type of industries or from companies in deep trouble as this is the only way for them to attract investors. And such dividends are typically not sustainable for the long term. Now while it's not unheard of for investors to load up on such stocks, I generally as a rule of thumb avoid any dividends above 10 or 12 percent and I found the 7 to 9 percent dividend yields being the sweet spot for high returns and relative safety. The final step is to formulate an exit strategy. What do I mean by that? Well, despite your best efforts to identify and research ultra high dividend paying companies, a few choices may end up going bad for you as there just is no foolproof way to predict future performance. By going bad, I'm generally referring to the dividend being cut or even completely eliminated. In that case, you're going to want to sell the stock and reinvest the money into some other company. And that in turn means that the stock has to be easy to sell so you can exit your position easily. The stock market is after all a market and believe it or not you may have trouble selling your stock or selling it at the price you want. So how do you maximize your chances of selling a poorly performing dividend stock? Well you need to review certain metrics that will ensure an easier sale long before you hit the buy button. Here are a few things to look for. First, make sure that your bid and ask price are as close together as possible. I prefer no more than 50 cents to a dollar apart. This ensures that there's market agreement on the price and you're going to get a fair price when you sell. Then make sure that the traded volume is sufficiently high. If it's in the hundreds of thousands or better yet millions of shares being traded, then this is a good sign as the stock is then considered a widely traded liquid stock and you should not have a problem finding a buyer. While I consider these two items the most important to check, there are a few other things to look at. First, check the stock's volatility or beta. Lean toward companies that have a beta close to 1.0, which is the same volatility as the overall market. That way a sale is easier to execute as there's price stability. Also, check the percentage of shares that are owned by institutional investors. High institutional ownership is generally a positive sign as these organizations employ teams of analysts and do extensive 
aggressive research. So it's considered smart money to invest in what they invest in. And as a rule, these stocks are generally easier to sell. Values of 60 to 70 percent are considered excellent in terms of institutional ownership. So to recap, pick a large pool of candidates that all pay dividends in the 6 to 12 percent range. And then spend some time researching, vetting, and eliminating unsuitably risky companies. And then as a final precaution, check the vital metrics on all your remaining candidates. And possibly eliminate a few more that may present a challenge if you do decide to sell them. Now admittedly, this is pretty active and hands-on type of investing. And my portfolio did take a large chunk of my time to initially research and set up. And it continues to take up time as I add new stocks and review the old ones for suitable performance. However, it's well worth it because you get a high performance portfolio where not only are the dividend returns fairly impressive, but also because you have quality companies selected in the first place, you have a moderate to significant appreciation of the stock price itself. So what does all this theory look like in reality? And what are some examples of stocks that fit the criteria I've talked about? Well, as far as performance, the average yield among all the stocks in my portfolio is about 7.25% right now, which is roughly double what the standard dividend portfolios yield. And my overall return for 2021 has been around 16%, which of course is both dividend income and capital gains. And this is fairly average or maybe slightly above average for what a typical active investor achieves. Now what are a few examples of stocks that fit the criteria I've talked about? I can list a few that are in my portfolio, but keep in mind these are not recommendations. I'm just using them as examples and you should always do your own research. The first stock is Iron Mountain, ticker symbol IRM. It's a real estate investment trust or REIT that specializes in the storage of records and media. The next stock is Magellan Midstream Partners, ticker symbol MMP. They are an energy company that specializes in the distribution and pipelines of natural gas and petroleum. And finally we have Altria Group, ticker symbol MO, and they are a vice stock and they specialize in the manufacture of cigarettes and other tobacco products. These are examples from the three industries I mentioned earlier, energy REITs and vice stocks. These three holdings all average in the 6 to 8 percent dividend yield and all three check quite a few boxes with company fundamentals, dividend stability and growth, and the ease with which these stocks can be sold if I have to do that. In addition, all three have seen pretty good share appreciation in 2021 with IRM up 40% since January. I encourage you to research these and other similar stocks and construct your own high dividend yield portfolio. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please do consider subscribing and hit that like button. And for much more information on the world of finance and investing, check out my new book, The Keystone Financial Guide, that is available at the website listed right here. Thanks for watching and I will see you all soon.